Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's talk about wages. This is our topic, right? We're in section 1-1 one, one of your textbook. Hopefully this shows up. Let me know if you guys can't see that in the far. 1.1, can you guys see that just fine? Yeah. I can. Who can? Okay, all right. I'll try to move that way then. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about wages. So what I want to talk about is hourly wage, what that means for, for the most part, what that, how that applies to you. Um, that, that's kind of the one part that some people just don't understand is, you know, what you make per hour does make a difference over your long term. And that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on this first chapter of your textbook. I know that seems silly, but it is nice to talk about it at least so you can have a realistic approach to something. So we're going to talk about, you know, your the actual hours you're going to be working, talk about the actual pay that you're going to get, and how that affects everything. Because sometimes, like when you guys were researching, you found that the wage you're going to be making wasn't like a yearly wage, or maybe it's just an hourly rate. There's a big difference there. Maybe it's contractual, or maybe it's just something where you're just your uh, your hired hand, so your temp. Okay, that's what I want to discuss. Now, did anyone in here? have an hourly rate for the job they're looking for. Like, oh, I'm gonna make 15 bucks an hour, something like that. What do you got? Like how much I'm gonna make? Yeah, and what was the profession you're looking for? Okay, social work and 27 an hour. Okay, so social worker. Okay, and 27 bucks an hour? Yeah, that's what I said. Holy smokes, that's nice. Per hour. Okay, nice. Okay, let's discuss, and we'll get to the other one. So let's help some hands go up. Okay, what this means. Every hour you work, you're making 27 bucks. Okay, as long as you're putting in the full hour and punch in. Now, um, now, did when you did any research, maybe you'd remember or not? Did it say like you had a contract per day, or is it just whatever hours? I think it's just seven hours. Okay, so okay, that makes sense. So, so it didn't really matter. You didn't have to put in like an eight and a half hour day or anything like that. As long as you're, you know, you're putting in the hours, you get paid 27 bucks. Maybe you're going to put in a half day or something like that. Um, it doesn't really matter. So 27 bucks an hour. What that means is if you take, so what this, what you're looking at here is $27 per means fraction, and then you have one hour on the bottom. So it's a fraction, right? Numbers like that are, um, it's just a different form of what they call as a, um, it's an indirect relationship between numbers. Indirect means a fraction. So it's $27 per, per is the fraction bar, one hour. Now what you do is when you multiply by your hours that you work, when you multiply by hours, what that will give you is it will give you your total pay. That's gross pay, that's before taxes. Net pay is what you're getting after the cash that you're getting in hand. Okay, what, what they always tell people, it depends on what your insurance is and what, you know, what other things you have. Typically, whatever your pay is, you get about, you get about 60%-ish 66% of that in cash when you get your first paycheck. They take about 33% for taxes and health insurance and whatnot. So um, it's it's kind of a shock, especially when you put in a bunch of hours and you didn't get really anything, uh, you didn't get any payback. I think one of the funniest quotes I ever saw was on an episode of Friends where um, it was Rachel, she was working at the coffee shop and she got her first paycheck for the year. And she wanted to know who was stealing her money and who this uh, social security worker was. Because it was social, uh, uh, social securities were taking out a ton of her money because she didn't think about, okay, you're getting a total pay for that hourly period, but you still have to pay taxes and, and social security and, and your health benefits and all that good stuff. Now, why this works out, why this works to be the number that you're getting? It's because in science and you know, in chemistry and stuff, they teach you about ratios, fractions. When you multiply by hours, Ours is over one. Any number can be put over the number one. That's how you make a number into a fraction. When you multiply, the word hour literally cancels. The word hour, like the label cancels. Now, it didn't matter if there was a number here. Maybe you maybe worked 17 hours this week. It's kind of low week, and you're just working 17 hours. The word hour cancels. So, and the ones are on the bottom. You don't really need the ones because you actually multiply straight across. So 27 times the 17. The ones on the bottom multiply together, and one times one is still one. And then the number on the top, you're taking 27 times 17. You can only do that is it's a nine, three, or four, it's 14, that's 18, zero, seven, two, nine, 15, one, four. Okay, you get 459. All right. Now, 
what this is. That's $450 that you just made. Now the hours cancel. It's not $459 per hour. The one is on the bottom. There's no label. All you have is the label on the top, the dollar sign. The one can go away because any number over one is just the same number because you can make a number into a fraction by putting a one on the bottom. It can also go away the same way. You don't have to have a fraction. That's $459. That's your total pay. That's just over the hours you worked. And you're thinking, oh, I just made $459. No, you didn't. Because you made about 66% of it. You know, with taxes and all that stuff coming out. So if you really want to know how to do that, roughly, this is how you can kind of guesstimate it. They always say you take your pay. So if I'm making $459 for that 17 hours, you take it times 66%. Because you're getting about 66% of your, your check. So how that works, how you multiply by 0.6, or you multiply by 0.66, that's how you do it. 66% has a decimal, it's this, and that's what you multiply by. So the check you're going to about to get, 459 times 0.66, you're about to make 300 bucks, even. It's 302. That's a big change. That is a huge difference in price that you're taking home as net pay. That really scares people, especially when you're like, I just made 459 bucks. I'm gonna stop there. You know, I got a $450 car payment I gotta make, or whatever your payment is. Maybe it's your mortgage or something, or your rent. No, you didn't. You made only $300 that week. There's a big difference because you have to worry about the taxes coming out. A lot of people forget this step when they're when they're calculating hourly rates. And don't get me wrong, that's a pretty good pay for a 17-hour work week. Now, 300 bucks, that's a pretty decent home if that's your mortgage for the month. Now, that doesn't mean you can stop working because you don't, you haven't covered any utilities, food, travel, whatever you need, you know, the amenities that you're gonna need in the house, but maybe that covered your work week. So you have to work 17 hours to pay that your mortgage. Now, that doesn't seem right, but I mean, that's a cheaper home. So, or an apartment, maybe it's a $300 an apartment. I don't know if we have any of those around here. But. Okay, not bad. But now why I bring this up, the what you get paid per hour directly impacts, directly impacts what you can purchase, how many hours you need to put in. So you gotta be thinking the long run. How many hours do I need to put in to make a bare minimum to pay all my bills without spending any other expenditures, without going on and buying you know, music and other things from the store or online. Okay, so you gotta be thinking about that. You gotta think about what your minimum needs to be, and that's what I wanna to get to by the end of this chapter. What does your budget need to be? How many hours do you need to put in to make the budget you wanna make at the end of the month? Maybe you gotta make your car payment, your student loans if you went to college. Um, maybe you gotta make your mortgage, you gotta make groceries, you gotta pay the cell phone bill. Um, you wanna pay the TV internet in your home. Um, you wanna pay the water bill. Okay, those types of things. There's seven things right there I can think of off the top of my head. That's not including any of the food, like fast food and stuff that I want to do. Okay, that's just doing, just eating at home every single night and buying the groceries. Okay, that's, which is not practical. I mean, some people need to go out. But you can see the scary thing is, I want you to see this number in front of you. That is a big difference. That was only over 17 hours. You're already off by 150 bucks. That scares people a lot when they don't know that, when they don't think of that. That's a pretty good pay though, per hour. Pretty sweet. Now, to figure out what you're gonna make per year, so that is a that is a nice job, right? What are you gonna make annually in that job? Because they're just saying, oh, you're making twenty seven bucks an hour. You're like, eh, yay, that's a lot. But what are you making per per year? Just so you can compare it. Because maybe the job you're also applying for, you got the social worker going, maybe you're applying for something else. What was another job somebody else was applying for? Anyone else, please? Teaching, okay, let's talk about teaching. Perfect example. If you're gonna go into teaching, first year teachers, now it depends on what school system you go to, I'm just gonna give you the baseline, 35,000 starting as a teacher. Now it's way different than when I started teaching 13 years ago, it was 24. I think a social worker makes me more okay. But let's say it's 35 starting. So teach, go and do a teaching. So you want to make thirty, or you want to make thirty-five thousand dollars a year, and that, by the way, thirty-five thousand—that's 
gross pay. That's not with taxes and stuff coming out, by the way. That's just what your contract is, but then they're gonna take a bunch of taxes and, and social security out of that. So you're not gonna make nearly $35,000 in cash. <coughs> Okay, so let's let's do the calculation. Because if you're comparing two different jobs, you're like, do I want to be a social worker or do I want to be a teacher? Here's the problem. You're looking at this and you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. You're not making $35,000 an hour, so how do you compare? You take 27 times a normal full work week, because teachers have to put in 40 hours a week. So 40 hour work week, that's one week of pay, 40 hours, and then you have to take it times how many weeks you're gonna work. Well, now, I know this seems weird, but because teachers only work what, nine months out of the year or something like that because you get the summers off. But you still have to consider if it's a full-time job, you're working 52 hours a week, or 52 weeks a year, because there's 52 total weeks a year. So you take your pay times the hours times the weeks, and this will give you what the yearly rate is going to be, the annual contract for that social worker. Now, just to compare, I'm going to do math for you here in front of you. 27 times 40 times 52. The social worker, I'm not joking, these are the numbers. The social worker at $27 per hour by contract is making this. Not bad at all. It's almost, can't even think about it. That's almost double what I'm getting paid. That's pretty good. That's pretty sweet. But that's also meaning you're putting in a full 40 hour work week, never taking off. You're working every week of the year. What about when you take off taxes? Taxes, okay, so taxes. So you got this, this is what your annual pay is per year. Well, let's take out taxes. So 66% of that is coming home with you in cash, right? So you're taking that number, 56,000, you take it times 0.66, I've got the taxes coming out. $37,000 in cash. You're thinking, whoa, hold the phone. That isn't right. No, that is right. I can tell you right now that when you get taxes taken out of your paycheck, you aren't making nearly what they're saying you're making. Like, I, I, looked, on, I looked online the other day, because they, they post all the teachers' contracts, like what you get paid. Okay? It said that I made last year 60 grand. I did not make 60 grand. Are you kidding me? I think I would know if I made 60 grand last year. But all my contracts I signed say they added up all like, oh, this is what he says he makes per year, and this is what the contract says, and this is what this, and they added it all up what I signed up for, and said I made 60 grand last year. Well, if you take that times 0.66, I'm making $39,000 last year in cash. 39,000 versus 60 what the newspaper said I made. That's 20,000 off. And people are like, Ward, you make too much money. Taxes took almost half of my paycheck. <laughs> that, that makes a big difference. Okay? I'm just now, in 13 years of teaching, I'm just now making more than a base teacher in cash because of taxes. Now, that does change. Don't get me wrong. This. This whole calculation, this mythical number that I'm saying that you're taking home in cash, changes per year per presidency. Because every president that comes in has a different agenda and they tax differently. They change the tax rates. Because our president right now, Trump, is a Republican. Republicans believe that you should tax the middle class and the lower class more than the upper class. That's a Republican. The reason why, and I can I can justify both reasons. Now some people are like that's stupid, and you shouldn't be doing that. Think about this: in the United States, and this is the sad part. So here's the U.S. Yeah, U.S. Sorry. Okay, in the U.S., there is more lower class and middle class people. There is. Think about it. There's more lower class and middle class people in the U.S. So their justifications are all Republicans, not just Trump, all Republicans always do this. They say they're going to try to target more people for taxes. So if they have more people in that test, because there's more middle class and lower class, when they tax them, there's more money coming in, because there's more people paying taxes, higher taxes anyway. Okay? Now, Democrats do the other way. So here's the United States again. Democrats have the complete opposite view. They tax more on the upper class because their justification is 
they make more money, so they're going to pay higher tax rates. So the big cities. Okay, the bigger cities, now there's obviously more than that, but the bigger cities, where's Washington now? Detroit. The big cities around the U.S., they're going to tax them more because there's more um, upper, upper class people living in those cities. So it depends on the state you live in. It depends on your economical status. There's a lot of things that affect it. Is it at 0.66 right now? I think so, something like that. That's, that's what you're going to It's 33%. That's what they always say. That's what you're getting, like... And that's everything, that's taxes, that's health insurance. So I'm very much generalizing stuff. So I can give you the exact numbers later. So but so there's a clear difference, right? You can see, you can see, like, okay, Democrats go, okay, we're taxing we're taxing the upper class more because they make more money. Well, that kind of makes sense to me. If you have a billionaire and you and you have you know a billionaire makes a certain amount of money per year, so let's talk about the richest man on the planet, that's uh, uh, Jeff Bezos. He runs Amazon. He's now the richest man on the planet. He makes like, his annual rate that he makes through Amazon is like 160 billion a year or something oh, like that. Oh, okay. 160 billion. Uh, let's see. That's million. That's thousand. All right. So, thousand. Okay. That's thousands. That's millions. Yeah. That's billions. All right. So, if you taxed him 33%. <laughs> He's still a billionaire. He's still a billionaire. But this is what his tax rate will be through the Democratic Party. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. That's his taxes per year in a democratic society. Okay? 528 million bucks a year in taxes. That's a Democratic view. Now, Republicans would not do that. They'd give him a lower class. Because they say, why should he be taxed more when there's more other people around? So they'll go after a teacher. So, so that was Democrats, right? Republicans are going to go after the person making the 35 thousand. They're going to go after the teacher, the middle class. What they say is middle class. They're going to go after them because there's more of them. Now, if you tax thirty-five thousand dollars, right? One through three. That's eleven grand. So a thirty-five thousand dollar teacher. This is the taxes they're paying. Okay, you're like, okay, eleven grand versus five hundred twenty-eight million. People are like, well, duh. What's the common sense answer? Well, problem is, there's a lot more teachers in this world than there are billionaires. Okay, I can see the math in that. Well, if you're gonna, if you got a couple hundred thousand teachers in this world, yeah, got a couple hundred thousand teachers, hundred thousand. Times eleven thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. You know you're making over a billion dollars in taxes. Okay, but then, so they they can argue both ways. So I want I don't need to be like skewed. I'm not trying to change your affiliation with Republican or Democrat because I just honestly don't care. But I want you to see the math behind it, the reasons <coughs> on behind that. Okay, why there's such a clear difference between the classes. Okay, now. Coming back to our topic, right? There's a huge difference. You need to know what your hourly rate is. You need to know and compare between jobs. You should have an idea of the job you want to get when you leave school. Have a, have a goal. And also, does it work? Is it even justifiable? Because I can tell you right now, I, I probably couldn't afford being a teacher in a bigger city. Could. I can't afford a $35,000 paycheck living down in Kansas City. That's why they go on strike a lot. Because the pay down there, the rates of like their housing are more expensive than here in Garmin. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't buy a house down there. So, you know, it depends on where you're going to go, what you want to do. You have to be thinking the logistics here. You know, like, can I even afford the car? Can I afford the... Can I even afford... The, uh, the taxes, can I afford you know, paying my student loans back? Because here's, here's something I want you to think about. We have teachers in Mason City, Iowa, or not teachers, uh, doctors in Mason City, Iowa, doctors. They went to law school for eight years, or law school, uh, they went to medical school for eight years. They're on food stamps in Mason City. They collect food stamps. I've seen it, a doctor using food stamps at a register. Because, their, their student loan 
is more than what they're getting paid in Mason City Hospital. And then they wonder why Mercy doesn't get doctors. Is they don't pay you enough to pay your student loan per month. And you're thinking, that's stupid, it's a doctor. Yeah, a doctor also had $500,000 worth of student loans. And they're getting charged, you know, almost four grand a month for the student loan. And they're getting paid maybe 125 grand over in Mason City Hospital. You're getting 125 grand. You're thinking a doctor should make more than that? No, they get paid 125 grand. They may be pulling in five grand a month, and they have a four grand student loan. So now, now they're making more. They're making less money than a teacher would in cash, because my student loan isn't that big. I don't have a five hundred thousand dollar student loan. You know, I have a thirty thousand dollar student loan through whatever university you're going to. So there's a huge difference there. I know that seems really weird to hear that for the first time. And some of you might make you mad, because, yeah, it kind of made me mad when I saw it. I was like, you're a doctor. What are you doing with, this? What are you doing with food stamps? But once you hear it with a reason, yeah, that's shocking. Like, close your mind. Okay. This is something you have to think about. You have to think about, okay, when they give you that fancy number, so many dollars per hour, what are you actually getting paid per year? How does that compare to other job fields? Because I'm telling you right now, teachers don't get paid a lot. You know, you might think of you, I like what I do, don't get me wrong, I like what I do. It's just that you don't make a lot compared to other professionals. You're sitting right now and make less than $27 an hour. And you think about the hours I put in here at school, it's pretty scary. What I get paid per hour for this time a lot. Okay, it's almost half of that. Almost 60 grand to 35 grand. Close to half. So. They include like your coaching pay there? No, 35, so anything off after that. That's why the paper said I make 60 grand or whatever, because I'm signed up for like five or six different things by contract to get to the social worker pay. But yeah, it's a little scary. You got to think about those types of things. All right, I'll start about some other professions because this is, this is good topics. So we got to talk about these. All right, what are some other jobs we have? We have a teacher. What are some other ones that you guys kind of research that you want to know more about? Let's, let's do one where we can figure out hourly rate. So somebody have like a contractual rate that they make? Like where it said, oh, you make this annually. I know that we had uh, uh, Matt, uh, he said like his, he was doing lawn care service and he said it made anywhere from 30 grand to 200 grand a year. That made me laugh because that's a pretty big discrepancy, 30 grand to 200 grand, depends on where he's at. I don't know how there, there could be that big of a difference, but let's talk about that. Let's do like let's do a job like that. So let's go backwards. Let's take that lawn care business that um, Matt wanted to do the other day. All right. Jesus, All right. This is our last half today, and then we'll be done. I swear, we'll be done right after this this little note. Okay. So let's talk about Matt's lawn care business. So let's say, let's say in Iowa he's not going to make the 200 grand. That doesn't make sense. Let's say he makes, let's say he makes the 30 grand. We'll, we'll go to the bottom run. He probably won't, but let's just say he makes 30 grand. Okay. All right. This is his annual pay for that lawn care business. So he wants to run. That's what it said online. Okay. Let's figure out what his hourly rate is. What he's going to get paid per hour. So what do you do? If you think about this, what I said earlier is you take your pay times 40 times 52, and that gives you what your annual pay is. Yeah, that's going to give me my 30 grand. Okay, so whatever you're getting paid per hour, you take times 40 times 52, that gives you your 30 grand. To go backwards, to figure out what you're getting paid per hour, to figure out this number right here, you take these numbers to the other side, one at a time and you do the opposite of multiplying. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So you divide one at a time. So it doesn't matter which one you take over first, it'll work either way, but just do them one at a time. So we're gonna take 30 grand, we're gonna take, let's take over the 40 first. That was the first one I had drawn. So we're gonna divide by the 40. So if I divide that over, 
So this is my pay per hour. We're going to take over the 41st. I'm taking that over and I'm going to take that 30 grand and I'm going to divide by the 40. Right? So that I get 750. I'm And then the last step is take the 52 over, divide by the 52. But take that 52 to the other side, then this is what I get. So 750 if I divide by the 52, I'm getting $14.42 per hour. Per hour. So we back to this, we figure it out. 14 bucks an hour. Okay? To let you know. When I first started teaching at Ventura, I was getting 24 grand an hour, or 24 grand a year. 24 grand a year, an hour. 24 grand a year. I was making less than $14 an hour. To give you in context of that, somebody working at McDonald's was making more per hour than I was. Just blew your mind right there, didn't it? Somebody working at McDonald's in Clear Lake. A normal kid walking there off the street could make more money per hour than I was teaching. There's a difference there. Okay. Do you wanna do you wanna flip burgers or do you wanna stay in the front? I made that choice. Okay. Now that might shock people. Fourteen bucks an hour. That's the longer. That's thirty grand. Now it's obviously not obviously, but but yeah, that's fourteen bucks an hour. I mean, uh, what was uh, Quick Star is about to open, right? Up town? What yeah. were they advertising? Like eleven dollars? Eleven sixty six. Eleven sixty six starting. And then you go up from that, right? Yeah, they give you like Yeah, look at that. Like right there, you're I'm almost guaranteeing you're making more than a starting teacher right there. Because if you go up with all your bonuses, you're gonna make more than a teacher. Teach someone making thirty five. Fourteen bucks get you to thirty. You're gonna probably go up from there. Maybe you worked at McDonald's, maybe you became that manager at McDonald's. You're probably making more than fourteen bucks an hour. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. What is minimum wage right now? Seven something. Seven something. Seven something. Seven something. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know. So I, I haven't even looked at that number for a long time. Pretty sure it's seven twenty-five. Okay, yeah. seven twenty-five. All right. To let you know, when I first, when I was in high school, same age as you guys are, and I was working my thirty-five hours a week at Movie Time Video in Clear Lake, um, I was making five dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. That was that was minimum wage at the time. That's not like my bad. It was a movie star. I just got to watch movies all day, so you can't feel that bad about it. But, okay, so 725, you said? 725, let's say you work a full 40 hour week and you work all 52 weeks of the year. You can be making at minimum wage times 40 times 52, 15 grand a year. And that's, that's gross pay that isn't with taxes coming out. This is what our lawmakers say is enough to sustain a family. Why? Yeah. That's the problem I have. That's what everyone kind of also jokes about. And then they say, well, we can't raise the minimum wage. Because if we would raise the minimum wage, we have to pay all of our workers more money. Duh. They can't survive on 15 grand. Okay, just to give you an idea. 15 grand times your point six six. This is what you're going to take home in cash. You're taking home. $9,952 a year. That's after taxes and Social Security and you know your insurance come out. If roughly. Again, I'm ballparking everything here. Okay, then you're dividing that amongst your 12 months. Okay, because that's what you're making per year. So you're dividing amongst 12. You're making $829 per month. Because I divided by 12, right? There's 12 months a year. Yeah, it's a limit, right? You're still going to try to pay a student loan, you're going to pay your, your mortgage, your cell phone bill. My cell phone bill is $300 a month. That right there, that leaves me 500 bucks. And you're probably thinking, or do you pay $300? I got five people on my cell phone plan. That's kind of expensive. All right. But, but yeah. They, they say that's enough for a family to live on. That's working 40 hours a week, 52 weeks of the year, never taking a day off. Ever. Not being sick. Give you a reality of you know having a kid. Like they're sick all the time. It doesn't matter. So yeah, that's it's silly numbers. 
especially if you went to college or something and you're and you're trying to work a minimum wage at college and you're trying to pay your student loans. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Okay. Okay, here's something funny. Here. Think about this. That's minimum wage per year, right? The the tuition at Iowa State this year per year is that. It's tuition at Iowa State. That's not spending a dime. It's not ten grand. It's the fifteen grand. I think it's sixteen grand. That's in the state. I think. That's not staying with. That's not going in in house. Like you're not staying at the dorms. You're just getting the tuition for the college. I think if you stay in the dorms and stuff, and you have the food and meal plan and stuff, it's twenty four grand. Ooh, yikes! So now you're thinking, okay, I'm not going to college. Well, here's the problem. Maybe you can't be the social worker anymore. Maybe you can't. I don't know. Maybe you can't. Maybe you can't do the lawn care because maybe you don't know anything about chemistry. So you can't. You can't run that business and get all the chemicals you want. So there is gives and takes to everything. I know it's really tough. Tough pill to swallow. But I think it's important. You got to talk about these things. You guys got to know them. You guys got to see them for the first time. Or let let somebody explain to you now. Obviously, as we go throughout the year, I'll get more specific. You know, like I'm making up numbers here, right? I'm, I'm selling. I'm saying that you're going to get 66 percent of your, your your annual contract back in cash. Yeah, that gives and takes. You know, that's that's considering everything. So, but it's important. You guys got to see this stuff sometime in your life. All right, well, that's it. For We're done. Question: What's the richest in the world make per hour? Good call. Okay. Jeff Bezos. Uh, he makes 160 million a year, I think. Did I say that? Billion. Billion. Uh, billion. Yeah. Sorry. Just say it okay. 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 Um, divided by 52. Divided by 40. Oh. Uh, delete, 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 delete. Okay, and divide by 40. <laughs> you want to know what his hourly rate is? 40K. No. Ah, to make 160 billion? You know? An hour? No, um, to make 160 billion at the end of the year, you have to make, and I'm not joking, you have to be making $76,900,000 an hour. <laughs> What's that per second? Yeah, that was a good question. Divide by sixty. Divide by sixty again. Twenty-one grand a second. His bathroom break will make more than me a pre. You could literally give all that money to people in Ghana. Um, they say that you know our national debt's like nineteen trillion. If all the billionaires in the United States were to collect their cash and pay, they could pay it off. So yeah, like that's gonna happen. Yeah. I call that corruption. Mr. Ward, how much does the president make? Uh, three hundred grand a year.